Responsible Research and Innovation, in short RRI, has become a well-established term among researchers, policymakers, funding agencies, and businesses. Among the academic publications, the journal paper Developing a Framework for Responsible Innovation stands out. It has received more than 1,500 citations and is therefore one of the most often quoted publications in the area of RRI. It's a great pleasure for me to welcome one of the authors of this groundbreaking publication in our Responsible Innovation Story today, Richard Owen. Richard is professor at the University of Bristol's School of Economics, Finance and Management. He has conducted and advised several Horizon 2020 projects, and he serves as an associate editor of the Journal for Responsible Innovation. Richard, thank you very much for taking the time for this interview today you coined one of the most important definitions, these four dimensions of RRI. What are these four dimensions? How can they be best explained to someone who never came across RRI before? Our starting point was always, this is about our profound ability to create futures through our imaginaries and the sorts of science and technological development that we do now. And that with that comes a responsibility, a responsibility for the future and ultimately the question uh, what kind of future do we want innovation to create but also innovation is deeply unpredictable we can't predict the future so we also have to understand how we make decisions and proceed do science create knowledge under conditions of, of great unpredictability and uncertainty and in order to, to answer those two questions we came up with four fancy words and the four fancy words were words about anticipation which fundamentally means what kind of futures are we creating as scientists as innovators as researchers what kinds of impacts might they have who might benefit who might not how else could it be used the second dimension is around reflection and i think there are two parts to that one is literally looking in the mirror and saying why are we doing this <laughs> what are our motivations and purposes but there's a second order reflexivity as well, which is what's the political context in which it sits, the norms of society. The third one is around, um, we call it inclusion, but it could be engagement, which is it's really important to engage other people in the conversation about the sorts of futures we want to create and are creating to understand how they frame things. And then finally, it's about action. It's about responsiveness. It's about using that knowledge to help shape agendas, and also shape trajectories under conditions of uncertainty. Looking at these four dimensions, people say they do not focus on outcomes or impact so much. They are proxies for outcomes and impacts. Should there be something added regarding outcomes and impacts? I was really um, very keen that we didn't impose a normative element to it. As time has gone on, I've become increasingly of the view that we do need to, to, to make a decision about that. And I, personally, I think the long-term sustainability of our planet and our species in the face of overwhelming evidence on climate change is one area which many of us would agree we need to fix that as an anchor point, if you like. What were the main challenges and achievements of RRI over the past years? The first thing is, and in no small part because through the actions of, of people like the European Commission and others, is that we built a, a community of not just scholars, but practitioners as well out of it. And that's because of the investment over the last 10 years. Of, 10 years. If I was to be countercritical to that, I think there are a number of areas, looking back on the, the publications in the journal and, and my own work and others, where we, we really need to do some, some heavy lifting. The first is that current policy for innovation is insufficient given the challenges that we face. And I think that's really important that, that we engage with the politics of responsible innovation because it sits within a bigger economy, a bigger political economy. And we need to be acknowledge that and we need to address that. Um, the other thing that I think we've, we've learned, although there's been a lot about responsible research and innovation, responsible innovation, it, it's catching up a bit. It's still not been a lot about innovation, a lot of which happens in the corporate sector and particularly around innovation systems, around how different actors combine knowledge and the kinds of 
normative ends to which they are gearing innovation and the power dynamics within that and the interests that are at stake. The third one, which I, 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 I just thought of that's important, is this idea about how this concept translates into different cultures and across borders. So remember that these are ideas that are predominantly come out of the North and the West. And we've got to be really careful about that. And then finally, uh, I've been involved in a project called RRI Practice, which is a big EU project looking at translating responsible innovation into practice. And we, we've really learned about how we need to understand um, organizational change organizational studies, how things change, because we've not really engaged with that community of scholars and scholarship. That's really important if we're going to make the move from just words into practice. What are the main topics of the future? One is around politics and around representation and the politics and deliberation. And that's around how we set innovation policies and agendas. I think there's an agenda around innovation and innovation systems around understanding how responsible innovation is configured in a more systemic rather than project focused basis. But for me, the biggest, and we're just about to publish some work in the, in the journal research policy on this, is around translating these things into organizational practice. And I think that means an agenda which sits at the interface between responsible innovation and organizational studies. There's the upcoming New Horizon Europe program and the European Commission suggests to embed RRI in all projects. Now, given the vast array of projects and missions, how can we mainstream RRI across the entire funding program? Well, I need to say a little bit about something about the European Commission and, and its version of responsible research and innovation, which is a little bit different to the one we've been talking about. I, I think originally there was a vision of, that, that was produced by people like uh, René von Schoenberg, which had a lot of similarity with the sorts of ideas that, that I've been talking about and others have been talking about. And it had a very broadly similar kind of um, normative view and, 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 and vision. I think what's happened over time is that the narrative of responsible research and innovation in, in the European Commission sense has become more prosaically translated into these five keys, but they're not the same thing. So I think in terms of the future, and perhaps the open science agenda might allow that to, to happen, uh, it's important that we wrestle RRI back to its original vision, its more ambitious vision, and not give up on that. Which actors, which societal groups are most open towards RRI, are most advanced, and which ones lag behind? As we emerge out of crisis now, co the COVID crisis is creating a huge amount of questions about the legitimacy of current practices and institutions. And in the wake of that, we're going to see a lot of entrepreneurship and innovation in the digital space in particular. We may see increase in, in forms of surveillance, for example. Uh, we may see new forms of working, working from home or in different places. And I think responsible innovation has a huge part to play in that. But in, in terms of identifying who those people are, it's going to be those kinds of institutional entrepreneurs that are creating those innovations in the wake of this crisis that we need to work with and who perhaps have a lot of agency to be creating new futures. Do you think that the COVID crisis is a window of opportunity for more responsible research and innovation? Crisis breaks things, the pieces go up in the air and they don't fall back in the same place. Not always, they may fall back in a similar place, but sometimes they fall back in a very different place. And that's where the innovation happens and that's when, when the, the, the entrepreneurship happens. This is an incredibly important moment for us to embed this kind of thinking into that schema and to say, right, this is going to be a moment of substantial change going forward. And we need to anticipate the kinds of changes that are happening, reflect on their entanglements and what we're doing and include others into the conversation. And in doing so, hopefully make that change more socially robust and ultimately a better society and better world. So I think this is an incredibly important point and an incredibly important moment. And if there is ever a need for responsible innovation, I think probably now it's needed more than ever. How can we embed RRI practices in areas of disruptive digital technologies, in areas where it's so unpredictable? I'm going to sort of draw on Shoshana Zuboff's book on surveillance capitalism to remind ourselves about what happened post 9-11 and the dot-com bubble in 2001 uh, and, to, uh, and 2000, where there was a huge crisis. 
after that crisis, uh, there was an unprecedented wave of digitalization between some of the big tech companies, between the tech companies in the state and uh, the security in um, security agencies, big infrastructure developments. We saw a real change and we're living with that now, our, our, our presence, our Facebook presence, our psychographic um, profiling of all of us present came out of that sort of era of the 2000 and 2001, post 2001 era. So if, if, we could, if we could go back to then, I would ask myself, well, what, what could we have done back then? And I think the first thing is to understand emergence better, understand who is creating those futures, what kinds of knowledge are being created, what kinds of um, f f futures are being imagined and how are they being resourced and put into play and by whom? And I think now we, we face a similar sort of thing where we should be doing a similar sort of thing. And that's not just about assessment and understanding what, what, what's going on. I think that's also about engaging critically and engaging substantively with those people and saying, you know, we would like to have a stake in that future of digitalization now, because I foresee um, very substantial changes potentially biometric and, and dig digitalization combined with biometrics together, ubiquitous surveillance combined with things like the Internet of Things. It feels like we need to understand that more. And that really is what responsible innovation is about. It's about understanding and opening these things up more, making them visible, engaging with them and saying, hang on a minute, we do have a stake in shaping what those futures look like as well. We're creating futures in profound ways sometimes, enabled through materiality, and through through technologies and knowledge, and that it, it is it is incumbent upon us to think about what our responsibilities for the future are, and to shape those technologies in a way which are responsible. I've always felt that that's the key thing about responsible innovation. Thank you very much for this very interesting and inspiring discussion. Oh, you're very welcome.